Hello, OpenXML developers. This is Eric White. Today, I am super happy to announce a new module, HTML Converter version 2.6.0 in Power Tools for OpenXML. This HTML Converter is a pretty high fidelity conversion of word processing ML to HTML that is formatted with CSS. Let's just download the new Power Tools 2.6.0. We'll unzip it and we'll open up the project and run the example. To download this version of Power Tools, go to the Downloads tab. And you're going to want to download Power Tools Core 2.6.0. I'll save this. I'll unzip it. I'll extract everything. Go into the OpenXML Power Tools examples directory. And here is the solution. You can open this with Visual Studio 2012 or Visual Studio 2013. As far as I know, there's nothing in the Power Tools for OpenXML that prohibits it from being open and run with Visual Studio 2010. Here, let's open this with Visual Studio 2012. As you can see, the HTML Converter 01 example is set up as the default example in this solution because it's what I'm most proud of right now. All we have to do right now is just press F5. It'll do the build and it converts five docx's to HTML. Let's go look at those docx's and the corresponding HTML that was generated from those docx's. If we go into the HTML converter 01, here are the five docx's. I'll open up uh, another explorer and put it over here so it's easier to open up the docx and then open up the HTML. So let's open up test01.docx. You can see it's a document. It has some interesting features such as fonts of various sizes, some lines, some checkboxes, and so on. And let's look at the HTML that was generated from that document. And there it is. You can see it has the same fonts. It has the same font sizes. And it's got a pretty good approximation of all of the various borders. You sometimes can't get an exact translation of borders from word processing ML to CSS, but you can get pretty close. Let's look at the next document. And you can see this is a nicely formatted set of tables that contain the weekly assignments of homework for some student. Let's look at the resulting HTML. And it looks very much the same. All of the tables are formatted the same. All of the notes are formatted with the exact same font in the exact same font size. Let's look at this next example, Test03. This is a somewhat similar example. It's a calendar that is put together with an image in the top of the calendar, and it has the days of the month down below. Let's look at the resulting HTML. And there it is. It looks very much the same. Let's look at Test04.docx. This is a formatted agreement. It's a legal agreement or something like that. Let's look at the resulting HTML. And it also looks very much the same. It uses the same bullet points up here. And if we drop down here, we can see there's some numbered lists and some more bulleted points down below. Everything looks good. And finally, let's look at test05.docx. This is a resume by 
a fictitious person, Diane White, and you can see it's formatted very nicely in Word, and it has almost exactly the same formatting in the HTML rendering of that document. This conversion, it honors all styles. It honors styles if styles inherit from other styles. It, of course, honors the global defaults for the run and paragraph properties. It uses table styles with all of the conditional formatting of table styles. In other words, you can set the formatting for the first row, the last row, the first column, the last column, and so on. All of that's properly handled. One interesting thing about this is it properly supports tabs. It does this by calculating font metrics and then calculating spans of an exact size that it puts into the HTML so that the HTML lines up exactly as it should. It supports borders of paragraphs. It supports borders of tables. It supports external and internal hyperlinks. And finally, you have a lot more control over the conversion because you have all of the source code and it's just plain old C-sharp code. Well, not just plain old C-sharp code. It's actually C-sharp code written in the functional style using a recursive pure functional transform, but nevertheless, it's just C-sharp code. It doesn't use XSLT or any other interesting tools. There are some things that it doesn't do yet. This is a first version. One of the things that it doesn't do is it doesn't properly support Asian and right-to-left languages, such as Arabic or Hebrew. That's on the list of things to take care of, first thing. There are a number of other issues that I've detailed in the blog post that introduces this video. Feel free to read that blog post to find out more about this module. We are Really excited to see the interesting things that you will make using this module. Thanks for watching.